The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Thursday, last day of September, September the 30th. And uh, wow, I would say on a monthly basis, we've been waiting and waiting. We had to wait almost the whole of September to see if there was going to be no new high above 35,631 in the Dow. There will be no uh, leg ex D extension. There will be a peak D. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we try to do is identify the lowest low bar and then merely count each successively because it should be a very simple thing. Count each successively higher peak alphabetized sequentially A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The first is peak A, second is B, third peak is C, fourth peak is D, and it's at that fourth peak that other things can happen. That's the most important thing. That's where you could recycle within uh, two to three bars to a new, um, almost like a new buy mode that takes you maybe to another peak D, but that's where the, the prices can continue higher. At the same time, that's where you can get, your, you see the dash line? That's where you can get your sharpest move to the downside. I also like to look at straight lines up and down, cup formations, arch formations. Mark is just made up of those uh, three configurations. So what we're looking at here is this lowercase h where you come down sharply, it's red because when it makes an arch and then takes out that left side low, be careful. This is what you saw on the Dow, 35,631. Here's the daily chart, 16th of August, comes down to 34,690, rallies all the way to the 35,500s, fails, and then starts this thing that I call Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It arches over, it makes this pattern, the dreaded H, why dreaded? Because it took out that left side, 34,690 low, and it went down. Lower. What can you do in this particular pattern? You can have a measured move from the arch high. Usually it fails at a peak A or a peak B, becomes a B minus. And then you get a measured move from that arch high to the base. And you can go one to one to the downside. We've gone more than that. We've gone to 33,613. Then there's another rally, another arch formation. And where does it get stopped? Right at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And now what we're looking at is there's another arch. Well, it hasn't broken down. It's just turning over. It's rolling over. But it's very important to keep in mind. You see, the, in fact, this pattern that we're looking at right here, this one, this arch, look at this. Patterns repeat like fractals. It doesn't matter the time frame over and over and over. Look, you can see this. But I, I'll do one thing at a time. Here's the E-mini. This is the S&P E-mini. What did we just see? We saw the arch formation within a rectangle. I didn't mention that because I don't want to make it too complicated. Within a rectangle, not breaking out above the left side high, and then it makes the arch formation, takes out the left side low, and there it is. This is the one minute chart of the E mini. And look at the M shaped pattern in the MACD. Okay, I had a question that I'm going to deal with very shortly. Let me just finish up all the numbers here. You see the arch formation in the weekly chart of the Dow. There's an alternate count, G slash C. G, we've seen as tops lately. Uh, we'll see if this is going to turn out 35,631. We don't know yet. Uh, we'll only know if there's really a turn down from the 30. At this particular point, on a weekly basis, tomorrow afternoon, Friday at 4 o'clock, I'm pretty sure to put an, a, a down arrow. It depends on what happens. I can't do it until the end of the week. It's a weekly chart. You have to wait. For the last day and in the monthly chart i can say right now that there's a peak d even if we have a monster rally this afternoon you can't have a 1200 point rally in the dow when there's something sitting out there that is is causing the hesitancy let's say in the market the bills that are waiting to be signed okay so this is the dow monthly all right enough for that let's just go quickly through the others because i want to do uh, an analysis of the s p uh, S&P right now, there's the dreaded H, there's the first one, the big arch formation, that's just an arch formation. Here comes the H formation, still only in the process of forming. 
um, a break below 43, not even a close, but a break below 43.44 says, uh-oh, watch out, the 43.05 low of uh, Monday a week ago, that, that's going to be tested. If whatever the news is, is a break above the gap that was made three days ago, and we can start to trade into the 44.20s, that'll be spectacular action. <laughs> You're going to have to have some really good news for that. So far, it's a peak D. By tomorrow, I'll probably put a down arrow to say that the weekly chart is probably in a sell signal, not a sell mode yet, because the 9 hasn't gone down below the 14-period moving average. And the monthly chart is still only in leg B. Remember, we're always looking for four higher peaks in the buy mode. That is in 2022. That's the soonest you can get your peak D. So, the, so far, that's very bullish. Doesn't mean to say that you can't get a sharp pullback, but it does mean to say there should be higher highs in a monthly chart. Let's go to the QQQ and the X100. Look at the dreaded H. That one formed completely. One little one over there, big one over here. Try to rally. It hasn't been able to hold the rally yet. It's up 2.27 at 361.57. Peak E, I'm pretty sure you now under the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. The 9 is still way above the 14. But I wouldn't be surprised if I want to put it down an arrow to say the weekly chart is starting a sell signal. Hasn't yet, but we're real close to making that decision. Any huge bounce because of whatever news it is going into Monday uh, could see uh, some kind of daily chart changes format, but so far not. Let's go to the IWM. Uh, IWM made its all-time high back in March, the week of the 19th at 234.53. Now, this pattern here where you rally sharply and you get back and then you go within fractions of the previous high, it doesn't matter the time frame, and then fail, says, watch out, you can stay in a trading band for quite a while. And that's what's happened with the Russell 2000 monthly chart. Actually, it's held pretty well considering we made a peak C1 top back in March and now we've retested it again in May. And we are still in this kind of a rectangle formation uh, consolidation. I just want to go through these quickly. Gold, as I said, sharp move up. It's up 25 points now, 1747. Very oversold. Uh, this, I, I'm treating this right now as a bounce, but we won't know if that's a bounce until we look at the dollar. The dollar right now is starting to pull back. It's down 12 ticks at 94.27. Leg E. Uh, a little bit overbought in the uh, weekly, but uh, uh, still it's really good. A monthly chart has gone to a D. Let me do the TLT. We've got callers waiting. We've got the TLT trading at 144.15, down 19 cents at the lower end. Look at that peak D, how sharp peak D pullbacks can be from 151s down to the 143s, uh, trading at 144.18. And I just want to get to crude oil, crude oil right now. I think I'm forgetting. So, oh, I am. Uh, crude oil is trading at... There we go. All right. Crude oil is trading at 73.92, down 91 cents. Peak E, Doji Candle. I said to subscribers to opening call, we're going to hold off trying to buy anything in the oil sector. I think there's a bit of a pullback here. There's your double top. When I talk about double tops, going within a fraction of the previous, look at this, the high that was made back in, uh, this was July, I think it was. Oops, there's the break. Uh, back in July, at 96.22, the most recent one is 96, just above that. Isn't it funny how double tops can occur? We've got we've got John on, in Philly. Hi, John. We're going to get back to you in a moment. Is that okay? Can you hold on? Will do. Okay, I'll be back, folks. John's waiting, and we'll be back. Dallas on 61. We'll be talking about S and P. We're talking about gold as well. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Basil Jaffman here. Tiger Technicians out. Dow's up 30. S&P's up 15. And we've got John in fully on the phone. And I do believe, I just have a slight suspicion you'd like to talk about gold. There you go, sir. Basil, uh, you've been documenting this nicely the past couple of days. Um, I'll just read what I posted in the Tiger's Den for what it's worth. I speculate... These Comex Gold and GDX, that gold miners ETF, bottomed three hours ago. Um, that's my speculation. Uh, and, of course, time is going to prove that correct or not. I'd like to ask you if you would kindly please pull up your uh, multiple time frame charts in both the These Comex Gold and the GDX and tell us whether or not the Chapman wave counts and your technical indicators support the idea that a bottom is forming right now. Okay, so there are a couple of things that go on going on right now. We've seen big candles in gold a number of times, and on the way up from that spectacular decline, uh, back at, what was it, the 9th uh, of July, uh, August, let me see. Yeah, August the 9th. It, it plunged in the continuous contract down to 1677.9. And when I say plunge, I'm talking about just five sessions before that on the 4th, it was trading at 1835.9. It's called 1836, and it has a little bit of a dip down to 1679. And then it turns around with the Chapman Wave Roman candle with my, my technique. In this particular instance, it says this particular candle that opens and makes a tiny little wick before it plunges down and then closes about a half to two thirds above the wick low. If it's near a top, you might recall very well in October of 2007, I got that candle. No, I got it about a month or two later. I got the same candle in the monthly chart of the Dow, and then we pull back because the rule of thumb is at the top. If it, if it closes at any point in a shorter time frame, halfway into the wick, the bottom of the, uh, going on the way down, there's a really good chance you're going to take out the left side low. When it's done that on a very sharp decline, if there is a close within two or three bars above the wick high, in this time, in this particular case, it took four bars. 
and that on the uh, that was the high of 17 1765.7 but it took on the 13th of August it went to 1781 so that's it good now you can have a, a, a rally and it went to peak A B C D and that's the fourth highest peak and then it turned round and it started its move down and that move down has been very sharp and every time there's been a big green candle it's either one one day or two days and then it plunges down to make the left side low in the arch formation, um, it, it takes it out. Now, what we've got are three things. Number one is on the daily chart. There's a left side chart. The MACD histogram today, it didn't do it yesterday, but today is the first time that it's starting to move higher, but the MACD is still very weak. The stochastic is flat at 13%, and the on-balance volume didn't make a new low, so in a sense, that's a positive, and it is moving up sharply. That's the blue line. But the pink nine-period exponential moving average, which is at 1751, is way below the 14-period moving average, which is at 1760. To break above it, to for me to get some kind of a buy signal in the nine-period moving over the 14, you're going to have to see probably a rally into the 1768, 1773 level. I'm not saying time, but I would say that it should be in a shorter time frame, uh, maybe within today's Thursday, maybe by Tuesday or Wednesday at the earliest, uh, at the latest. And then I'll say, ha, that's good, because at that point, the MACD should be close to turning up or maybe even positive. And the stochastic, which, as I say, is flat at 13 percent, it needs to get to the 22 to 26 percent level. So that's on the very short term, looking at the gold contract. The pattern that I talk about, I don't want to make it too complicated, but the inverted Chapman Way falling axe had a resistance line that was taken out a number of times. And then the last four weeks, we've closed below it. Well, I shouldn't say today because we've got until tomorrow to go, but there's no way that it's going to go from 1749 to 1823. I shouldn't say there's no way in gold, but I don't think that's going to happen. You never know. But there's very strong resistance all the way to 1778 on the upside. So going step by step, this is a great candle. What would be very exciting for uh, gold bulls, and if I had to pull up, I usually pull up my ASA, which is, yep, ASA didn't take out yesterday's low. It's a nice candle, but it's early in the game. It had a big spike. It's given back a chunk of the spike. Let's now go to your GDX because you wanted me to look, to look at that. Now, the GDX has almost the same signals as the Dow, except the stochastics at 7%. The on-balance volume is flat. So I need to look at something else. I said there were three things. One is gold. One is the GDX. I'm going to include silver, not as the third thing, because it's part of, part of gold. So I'll call that part of the first uh, attempt at looking at different aspects. This is a good candle so far in silver, but look at the yeah, silver's yesterday candle. So all of us says, I need price to follow through. But wait a minute. The other aspect that we cannot ignore, and it's very important, is the, um, the, the Bach, uh, CBE Bach counterpoint move that we have, where one thing goes one way and the other tune goes the other way. And that's what we're looking at here, the dollar has had a huge move to the upside. The MACD is still very strong in the daily. Stochastic's flat at 92%, showing no signs of turnaround. The on-balance volume, I don't get here. I do get it in the UUP because that has volume. The UUP is a tad overbought and it's in leg D. So my, and the other thing that's really important is the nine period moving average is still very strongly above the 14. So I have to, I have to pull back a little bit and say to you, when you talk about this as a, a low, I think it's a low. I don't think it's the low. We don't know. It's the first, it's even like an hour and a half, three hours, let's say, of the move. So let's just say this is what you want to see for reversals. You want to see the counterpoint, which is a dollar in this particular instance, start to pull back but it's not good enough to pull back. The dollar will have to go from 94.28 in the continuous contract, the, I'm sorry, the dollar index. It has to close at some point in the next three days below 
63.60. 93.64 is the, is, the, is the nine period exponential moving average. So we'd have to close under that for me to say, aha, now let's put the other part of the pie together. And that's the euro, the euro USD, that is the euro dollar currency pair. And that is just looking horrible. I have a trend line that says at 1.158 right now, that trend line support, I'm going to be very kind. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make this red, uh, change the color red. There we go. And then I'm going to make the inside track green. So if you can hold on, if you want to wait or if you want to hold on, there's a lot to discuss. But I just want to put this as a package rather than one index turning up. Yeah, we're on the line. We're sitting right on the line on the euro dollar right now. This is where it has to turn up. If you want to hold on, i got some things further to say. Or else I'll continue this so you don't have to listen. Let me know. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, uh, folks. So as I, I said to John Higgin, uh, he usually likes to go back into the den and do his work and listen at the same time. That's what he's doing now. But I just want to mention, uh, Victor, I'm sorry, I couldn't take your call and, and you couldn't hold. You want to look at Apple. I see nothing in Apple right now. It's uh, up 19 cents at 143. It could have a bounce, but I think Apple is in a big digestive phase. And I wouldn't be surprised it's going to be trading between 148s, uh, 148 and 140 over the next week. And if it breaks either of those levels, I'll have to uh, uh, kind of do a recalculation. But I, I, don't, I don't see anything yet. And if one is short Apple, I personally, I would. If you are short, 
from anywhere in the 150s, I just hold that short. And in fact, I'd hold that short and say, take me out or make, my, make it 148.20 uh, or 148 stop, a buy stop, and just say, hey, take me out. And I'm just sitting here until uh, I, I decide to take my, my, my gains. That's the way I would do it. I think it is going to make lower lows at some point over the coming weeks. Uh, certainly, it could have a bounce. Everything's uh, getting oversold, but that's on the short term. Now, let's go back. So when we're talking about gold, if I look at the XLF, and this could happen because we're in a very interesting period now. Um, you know, you've got you've got debt, you've got you've got um, legislation that that they want to pass for trillions of trillions. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is we're talking about we're talking about trillions of dollars of money that isn't specifically going to projects but just to be disseminated, to be spent somehow. So we might find that this adds, if it goes through, it could add to this, you know, I'm talking about a global stock market frenzy at some point in the next, within the next year. So that could add to it by just having money out there that gets spent and then just evaporates when we get the big, the really big crash at some point. Or we could see it, you know, just, Whatever it is, I'm not going to even speculate on that side of it. But what I wanted to say, talking about gold, you see that the XLF, so the reason why I brought this up is that the XLF, which is the financials, when there is big uncertainty internationally, money flows into gold and money flows um, out of the financials and into bonds. And if you look at bonds right now with that huge move to the downside in the TLT with yields running up, uh, this is what I'm speculating that you need to look at. I'm not speculating in the prices. I'm saying this is really important for me at least because we've raised a lot of cash. We're sitting in a good position. Market rallies to the upside. We've got a lot of picks to choose from. The rally goes, uh, markets fails. There are a lot of things to do with the, with the money in the meantime. But in the, what I am looking at here is if the TLT, that is bonds, the TL 20th Treasury bond fund, trading at 144, suddenly slides to the 142 to the 141 area. That is going to suggest that yields are going to impact these, these areas. HGX, which is the housing sector, which has already had a huge turn down from just under 540, Trading at 448 right now. There's the dreaded H pattern in the weekly chart. It looks very poor. It's sitting in the daily under the 200 period moving average. Wood, the global iShares, Timber and Forestry ETF. That should see a slowdown. And so far, it's just pulled back from the most recent all time high at 98.98. It is trading at 85. I would say 13 points. It's what is the 13 points? It's about uh, four, 13, 14%. Yeah, it's a big pullback. But it's not a, a breakdown yet. It will break down if it starts to trade under 82, and it's at 85.85 right now. These are things to look at. Um, High-grade copper. Suddenly, high-grade copper is taking a smash to the downside. There's this large dreaded H. Look, from that high that was made, this is a very unusual uh, a recovery high at a peak C. But we did make an, a peak E at 4.8880 on the 10th of May. You remember I talked about rolling tops? And now we are trading at 4.067 in high-grade copper. So I, I, I'm answering your question to the gold aspect in, in putting it together with commodities. And this is a commodity, high-grade copper. And look what it's doing. It's making a second arch. It's now under the 200-period moving average. This is international economies. If you look at the EEM, I haven't updated this. Let's see where that is. Made a peak C failure in the arch formation. And it's pulling back very sharply. This is the emerging markets ETF. If you look at the FXI, it made a, an arch formation, took out the left side low, and it's struggling. This is the China large cap ETF. There's no reason why I wouldn't say, and I've been waiting for this, but I'm trying to have patience to say gold is going to be in play yet again if we are looking at financial havoc. And that's really important. That's the reason why I said to subscribers, let's raise cash. Let's 
let's be in a position where those spectacular stocks, like a DocuSign, um, pulling back sharply from a little double top in the peak C in the daily, uh, in the monthly peak B, uh, all time high in the weekly chart, DocuSign, electronic signing. This is a company for long term positions. I would like to get in, but I'm going to have to wait. I need to wait. It's at 2.59 um, after hitting the 3, uh, 3.12, 3.13 area. Uh, that's a pretty big pullback. The 2.49 is the 200 period exponential moving average. I, I could go on and on. Even Apple is a fantastic company. But if you want new positions in Apple, I'd say have patience. Let's see what happens here. Um, I, I, I had a question. Okay, and, I, and now I have, I want to go to the question that I had uh, actually from a few people, but this kind of summed it up really quickly. Um, uh, hi, Basil. Oh, I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, hi, hi, Basil. As always, I admire your work. Do you see any similarities between where the indices are now and where they were when the financial crisis hit in 2006, that was actually 2007, into 2008 and 2009. Were the indices at or near major tops with PDs, et cetera, on monthly time frames? Thanks much. Um, uh, best regards, always, James. So, James, your, your question kind of mirrors a number of people that have asked me the same, the same thing. So I thought, let me do this. First of all, let me go here. SPX.X. And I feel like I, tomorrow is Technical Friday, but I feel I can take time today. There's nothing we can do. Oh, Victor's back on. Victor, are you there? Uh, Victor? I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's, uh, sorry, Victor, I didn't realize you had called back. But uh, Victor, you did want to talk about Apple. Um, oh, yeah, hang on. I'm sorry, Victor, I didn't see you. Uh, you uh, call again tomorrow, but I, I didn't see you back there. So look at the S and P. Let me just do, do this. I wonder if, if I've got it in the time frame that I like and the background. Didn't I have it right here? S and P. S and P. Ah, oh, there's one. Okay, is it that one or this one? S and P. Let me go to this one first. Is that a white back? Yep, there it is. Oh, I haven't updated this for years. Look at this. It's still got uh, the last. Look, it got cut off. So the, the high that was the high up in the somewhere in the 37, 3770s. Uh, I haven't updated it. Let me see if I've updated it here. Oh, I wanted to show you this. So this is the top that was made. In, this is, oh, we got a break. Oh, we got time. Got a break coming up. Dow's down 45. SP's up six. I'll be right back. Bowser Chapel, take Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk 
free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. I just wanted to say that to John, I believe it's A low. I don't think it's D low in gold, but it could be a tradable low, and we will know with by Monday or so, Monday or Tuesday, if gold is really able to sustain this move with strong up sessions all the way into Tuesday, it's going to be very important because if there's any give back at all, that's just going to suggest that the strength that I'm seeing in the dollar is going to continue. And if the dollar pulls back, as I said, to that nine period moving average, then you're looking at a more concerted uh, pullback in the dollar rather than having just uh, like we saw in crude oil, actually. I would also like to say that Crude oil, a lot of things, this is very important, that XLF, if it starts, the financials, if it starts to fail, that's important. If the XLF suddenly breaks to the upside, that's going to be important, especially if gold pulls back and um, there's kind of an amelioration of any real tension in the market saying, hey, you know what, this is just a natural pullback and all this, the bulls that are going to be passed. And, and no big deal. But the, on the other side of the coin, if there is a whopper of a move to the upside by Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, in the general market, um, gold this time might actually move with it. And that's what we're going to see. And then maybe the dollar starts to pull back. This is complicated. So I like your thinking that it's the way of you have a plan, you're implementing your plan. Where would you add your position? And I'd say by Monday, if the gold contract is held really well. So um, oh, now we've got Victor back. Here. Hi, Victor. Uh, Victor, you there? Yeah, how you doing? I was just wondering, you think this is following the same guidelines as like when Lehman Brothers crashed and then the Fed came in and they gave the big bailout and then the market gave, so, uh, you know, went down and this could take that, until March. I think we're going to have a big crash. We're set up for it. No. So this is so you, you've almost mirrored the kind of question that was asked by James that I said I was going to deal with. Um, so wait, just real quickly, what you were going to ask, ask something about Apple? Yeah, but did, did you cover Apple? I was just getting back to the phone. I was just I, looking there. I, it seems like lower I did. lows. It I, looks I like we get into 137. There's a little gap there. Okay, let me just say that Apple at this particular point, the way it's come down, it said to me that it's in a a longer term um, consolidation. I'm not going to say it's going to crash anything, but it's in a longer term consolidation because this is the first time that it's taken um, this long in quite a while to actually pull back and then close under the 14 period moving average. So I'm just going to say to you, I said the range I'm looking at for Apple just on maybe over a two week span is if it breaks over 148. That would be good action, say that it can go a little higher. I don't think it's making a new high in this time frame. I think it has to hold off maybe late October, maybe November. That's when it starts back up again. But it has to hold 140. So it's kind of stuck between 148 and 140 right now. I can even say 139. But if it starts to close in the, on a weekly basis below 138, 
it's going to take longer for the consolidation. And I, I just, it's a great company. The, the monthly chart's fabulous. I just think it's it's due for a rest. And if you if you want to listen, I'm going to be doing the S&P now, which is exactly to your question. So I hope I've answered your yeah. Apple question. And, no, and, and now I was looking at the guidelines, and it's following. If you underlay 2008 and nine, you know they're going to give the big bail out, and the market's going to raise the fu finger, and then it's going to, you know what I mean? This ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? It takes time. It's like moving a big. Ship. Yeah, it does take time. But yeah. let me. Uh, so, uh, so I hope I've answered your Apple call. So now I, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go to the S and P. So thank you for your call, and listen to this All next right. one because I will deal with exactly what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, folks, let's go to the S&P. What we're looking at here, and this is a question. This is not just uh, Victor or James or many other people or me or even uh, um, uh, yesterday or two days ago, it was John who was speaking about the same thing. This is very important. So let me just show you this chart. First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back here. This is a chart that's not updated at all. Um, I've had it on here for ages and ages. I, I you always look at my charts to see many things sitting in the background. But look, here's this. This is the or the black background. It went to a peak D. The S and P back in 2007 had a really sharp pullback, and everyone thought, "Oh, this is it. This is it." And I said, "Wait a minute. My weekly chart. This is in 2007." Has this pattern that I talk about? This call, I, I used to call. I, you know, I have nicknames for my my all my techniques. I call this the camel double hump. You know, there are camels that have two humps, and the MACD moving average convergence divergence often has that. And on that second arch formation, other things can happen. So this is what happened. We got the D, and then we got that peak E. And this is a this is not a candlestick chart. This is a bar chart. So now let me get out of that. And I'm going to go to uh, this. I hope I've got it going back all the way because I, I periodically I lose notations and I have to redo them. Let's see. So this is the white background chart. Yep, there we go all the way back. And I'm going to go back as far as I can here. We want to go back to 2007. So roll, 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 little mouse. Uh, 2004. So there's this big rally that starts October. I, I don't want to talk about this now, but sometimes you get lows in March, and then another index will make a higher low in, say, um, October the next year, or it's October one year and March the next year, something like that. And it doesn't. But in this particular case, the, uh, I think it was the semiconductors didn't make the low in October of 2002, but the S&P did at 768, and then it ran up, and it went all the way to a high of in October of 2007. This is the monthly chart, and it went to this peak D. I had drawn in this left side, right side price time match, and I don't want to go into that from the low that was made back in October of 2002. But what I had said is, let's follow the MACD. You see it's got this arch formation. But it looks to me like if it holds and doesn't break down, it can make a second arch on the right side. And then it went to that high of October of 2007 at 1576.09. So now I'm going to do this. I want to get out of that. And I want to see if I do have notation on my weekly chart here. Let's go back. This is going to be a, a, yeah, I, I tend to lose uh, for some reason when trade station shuts down suddenly or when I, if I get a black, you know, blackout because of a power line or something, I tend to lose the charts. Then they go somewhere into the library and I have to renotate a bunch. So let me go back to 2007. Yeah, here we go. 17, 2015, 2000. Yep, notated. Good, good, good. 12. Uh, 2010, what did we say, 2000, there it is. So this is what we were looking at. Remember in the summer, we made this particular top here, and I had an alternate count. Now, I don't want to, maybe tomorrow I'll make this more complicated. <clears throat> but right now, I'm just going to say, in the Chapman Wave methodology, if within two bars, sorry, within three bars, from a PD pullback, there's a new recovery high, you can have an alternate count. It could be extremely bullish. Or you just continue the wave count alphabetically. Well, there was this instant restart with a low that was made at 1377.80, I see, uh, back in the week of the 1st of December of 2006. And that confirmed the little tiny, do oh, geez, tiny doji candle. 
And then we went to peak E, peak F, slash B, Doji Cattle Sharp all back, and I've drawn in something called the Chapter Unconventional Fat Base Restart to peak D, Trough. I'll be back to talk about it to see what happens and what the difference is technically and fundamentally. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So uh, I'll do this real quickly because uh, we can spend more time tomorrow. But we can time back to the range. What I want to say is it was a pullback in the week chart back in 2000 and uh, right here at the top right here yes so we made a peak d high remember we we're always looking for peak d and that was on the week of the 20th of july of 2007 at 1555.90 and then it pulled back real sharply and maybe tomorrow i'll talk about this but in the chapter wave unconventional flat base restart you could that trough that was made that becomes like a magnet no matter how high you go it comes back to it and look exactly what it did here. It did that. It pulled back and went under it back in the week of the March the 16th. It went to 13.63, and then we went to a new all-time high back in uh, the 20th of the week of the 20th of July at that 15.55 level. And then five weeks later, we are down and we've taken out. We've gone to 13.70.60, and then it rallies and it goes to a new high. This Chapman flat base, unconventional flat base, is like a bag. It's just an un. I found it. Believe me, it cost me a lot of money to find this one out. But I found out about it. And that, that was the clue that I needed with the doji candle 
and then we were looking at the, uh, the the Dow that had that Roman candle. So this is it. You see the right side. This is the the uh, that camel double hump right there in the MACD. The stochastic couldn't hold above 80 percent, and it failed. And look what happened. So I'm saying. So I'm saying technically. We're looking at something a little different right now. There are a couple of characteristics of the, that are the same. But most importantly, the whole banking thing, it, we are seeing something different right now to what we saw in 2007 in terms of the banking. But we are looking at legislation here. We're looking at COVID. We're looking at all sorts of other things that can produce a pretty sharp pullback if they come together. Have a great day. Stay tuned for great programming. Uh, check out my opening call, Daily Newsletter. Dow's down 190. We'll be back uh, tomorrow. Thank you.